the highest paying business degrees. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. But before we get into that, make sure to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about personal finance, college degrees, careers, and opportunities that are gonna lead you to success. And we also go over how you can avoid some of the common financial traps that so many people fall for. If you're new here and that sounds like something that interests you and you haven't done it already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss out. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. The very first one on this this list is going to be business information technology. So this one is basically going to be a combination of business and then information technology. So you're going to be using computer systems in order to help solve businesses problems and make managerial decisions. So with this degree, you can expect to make around $58,000 a year starting out and 108,000 in mid career pay. There's a ton of different career paths you can go down, but one of them would be a computer systems analyst. They make around $90,000 a year. There's 632,000 jobs available and that's growing at 7%, which is much faster than average, meaning over the next 10 years, there's gonna be around 46,000 jobs that open up. Now, one thing that I should mention here is some of the ones that are on this list might not be offered at all colleges. Some of them are actually extremely rare. There's only maybe a few hundred or a few thousand people graduating with a degree every single year. So keep that in mind as I'm going through this, but I think it's pretty obvious to see why this one is so good. Technology is huge right now. I talk about this all the time on the channel. And then when you combine that with business-related skills, which are pretty much evergreen, you've got a nasty combination that is going to get paid really well. There's going to be a lot of businesses that want people to have these skills. Now, with that being said, this is another degree where it is what you make of it. So if you just coast by in school and you don't do anything else, you probably won't be getting some of the higher paying jobs. As with any degree, you want to figure out what you want to do and then work your way back, reverse engineer it and figure out what steps you need to take in order to get there. So for instance, if you wanted to go into more of a development type role where you're actually, you know, doing some coding, then you you'd probably want to take extra classes in computer science. You'd also want to work on your portfolio and make sure people know that you do have those coding skills. If you wanted to go into more of the financial technology industry, you'd probably want to take extra classes in finance. Maybe you'd also get an internship with a finance company. These are just a few examples, of course. There's a ton of different directions that you could go, but you definitely want to make sure that you work your way back after figuring out what you want to do. Number two on the list is going to be a combination of finance and marketing. Now, one of the cool things about both of these degrees Degrees, finance and marketing is that they are very flexible. There's tons of different careers that you can go for with both a finance and a marketing degree. And when you put them together, there's even more. Now, generally speaking, finance tends to be a little bit more forward looking, whereas accounting, you're kind of crunching the numbers, but you're looking at things that happened in the past. And a major in finance is going to help you to interpret the numbers in order to improve a company's financial health in the future. Marketing tends to focus on analyzing consumer demands. So what does the consumer actually want from us? They also focus on analyzing marketing trends in general and then launching products that the market actually wants in a successful way. So basically you are bridging the consumer desire. So what problems does a consumer have? What demands do they want? What things make them happy? What are they willing to pay money for with the company's products? What the company actually offers the consumer? And then you're communicating that to the consumer in such a way where they're willing to actually buy the product. Put those two skills together, finance and marketing, and it's a great combination. So with this degree, you'd start off making around $53,000 a year and mid-career pay would be $110,000. One career path you could go down, and again, there's a ton of different areas you could go down, would be a personal financial advisor. They make around $87,000 a year. There's 263,000 jobs available. It's growing at 4%, which is about average, meaning over the next 10 years, there's going to be 11,000 jobs that open up. So one of the weaknesses of a marketing degree at a lot of different places that you might get them is that they don't really focus that much on the numbers. And marketing is becoming more and more about the numbers, making sure that you have the correct data so that you can make the corrections that are going to improve the product. Finance, on the other hand, is all about the numbers. It's all about crunching numbers and specifically making changes for the future. So you can see why putting these two things together is going to be a great combination. If you go into marketing, it's gonna help you be more of a data-driven marketer. And if you're going into finance, it'll help you to learn some of those softer skills and figure out where the market is going, which will help you to make good decisions. Next one on the list is going to be international business and finance. So this one is going to be all about managing money on a global scale. So business is getting more and more global. You've got Amazon, for instance, that is opening up companies all over the world, which is one of the big reasons why they pay pretty much zero dollars in taxes. And so more and more, you're going to see companies where they're going to start specializing in different countries. So you might see an American company, for instance, that has a branch of people who are specialists in selling to people in Russia. Every country is going to be different. They're going to have their own languages, cultures, customs, etc. And so you're going to have to understand 
understand that when you're trying to sell them products. So with this degree, you can expect to make around 57,000 a year starting out and 111,000 in mid-career pay. One career path you could go down would be a financial analyst and they make around $81,000 a year. There's 487,000 jobs available and it's growing at 5%, which is faster than average. And that means over the next 10 years, there's gonna be 26,000 jobs that open up. Now, international business on its own is a pretty good degree, but it does have kind of the problem of being a little bit too general. And so you wanna make sure that you plan ahead, figure out what country you're gonna be wanting to work with. But combining that international business degree with a more practical degree like finance is really good. So this one might be really good for you if you're somebody who wants to potentially live in another country, because a lot of the time they'll end up sending people who are specialists in those countries to the places that they want to live. Next one on the list is going to be accounting and economics. Now this is another one where you're combining kind of a business related degree that's very practical like accounting with another degree that's not quite as practical but it can still be pretty good which would be economics. Accounting is all about number crunching and usually it's going to be focused on a company, a business, or a person whereas economics is going to be a little bit more focused on the consumption, production, and transfer of resources and specifically wealth within a country. Now with this degree you can expect to make around $61,000 a year starting out in your first five years and $117,000 in mid-career pay. One career path you could go down is you could become an accountant, of course. They make around $71,000 a year. There's an astonishing 1.4 million jobs available. It's growing at 4%, which is as fast as average, meaning over the next 10 years, there's going to be 61,000 jobs that open up. Now, one thing I've noticed when it comes to economics degrees is that it's not really standardized across all universities. Some universities are going to focus on more of the practical skills when it comes to economics. Things like using Excel sheets, understanding data and how it's used, sometimes they'll even focus on a little bit of programming whereas other universities kind of ignore the numbers and they focus more on the social side of things economics is technically a social science degree and so that does kind of make sense but generally speaking this makes it very hard for employers to figure out whether you already have those skills or not compare that to a degree like accounting for instance where it's pretty much standardized across most universities you kind of know what you're gonna get when you hire an accountant so for this reason it's a great idea to combine your economics degree with an accounting degree just because they kind of know what they're going to get. Number five on the list is going to be quantitative economics. So quantitative economics does have a lot of the economics in there, but it focuses on the numbers. It's a little bit more practical than just an economics degree on its own. So with this degree, you can expect to make around $62,000 a year starting out and $121,000 in mid-career pay. One career path you could go down with this degree, and again, there's going to be a lot of them, would be a management analyst. They make around $85,000 thousand dollars a year there's 876,000 jobs available and it's growing at 11 percent which is very good meaning over the next 10 years there's going to be 93,000 jobs that open up so like I said before quantitative economics is going to be economics with a focus on mathematics but it also has a lot of statistics and sometimes even some computer programming in there as well these hard skills are going to make you much more attractive to a potential employer and so this one can be a very good option especially if you're someone who's interested in economics but you also want to make sure that you have those skills skills that people really want. Next one on the list is going to be corporate accounting and finance. So this one is going to be combining your finance skills with accounting skills to prepare you probably for a career in corporate finance. With this degree, you can expect to make around $61,000 a year starting out and $123,000 in mid-career pay. One career path you could go down here is becoming a financial manager and they can expect to make around $129,000 a year. There's 697,000 jobs available. It's growing at 15%, which is much faster faster than average, and that means over the next 10 years, 108,000 jobs are gonna open up. So I've talked about this in other videos, but when it comes to choosing between finance and accounting, this is a question I get all the time, there are some things that you should consider. If you're at a really good school, a school that's highly respected, generally speaking, it's probably a good idea to go for a finance degree. Whereas if you're at just a normal school, or you know, you're going to community college, something along those lines, it's probably a better idea to go for accounting. This could of course change, I mean, I always give you guys the advice to make sure to look at what goal you're going for and then reverse engineers the steps that you need to get there. But generally speaking, that seems to be true. But an even better decision might be to just go ahead and double major in accounting and finance. This is going to give you a unique skill set and open you up to a lot more job opportunities than if you just had one or the other. Number seven on the list is going to be operations and information systems management. So this one is kind of a unique combination of a few different skill sets. You're basically going to have management skills, statistics, statistics skills and information system skills. This is going to be a unique skill set that's going to help you make really good management skills when it comes to utilizing
utilizing current technologies. With this degree, you can expect to make around $63,000 a year starting out and $125,000 in mid-career pay. One career path you could go down is becoming an operations research analyst. And I know I keep saying this, but there's a ton of different career paths you can go down with pretty much all of the ones on this list. So I guess I'll stop saying that now. But with this career, you could expect to make around $84,000 a year. There's 105,000 jobs available. It's growing at a ridiculous 25%, meaning over the next 10 years, they expect 26,000 jobs to open up. So one of the reasons why this is such a killer combination is the fact that when it comes to operations, what that means, the word operations, means you're gonna be taking care of the business's day-to-day -day tasks. So you're not necessarily going to be planning on you know, what the business is gonna be doing in the future, you know, figuring out how you're gonna implement some grand plan. You're mostly just gonna be taking care of the business's day-to-day -day logistical tasks, making sure the business runs smoothly on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, one huge part of making sure that a business runs smoothly is its technology needs. And the truth is a lot of IT people don't understand the business side of things, the management side of things, and a lot of the business people, of course, don't understand technology. So if you're somebody who understands both, this is going to be very, very valuable. Number eight on the list is going to be quantitative business analysis. So this one is gonna be all about using mathematics in order to solve business problems. So for instance, you might use the numbers in income statements or sales reports reports, and then you use those numbers in such a way where you can solve problems that the business has. With this degree, you can expect to make around $67,000 a year starting out and $136,000 in mid-career pay. One career path you could go down is you could become a logistician. They make around $74,000 a year. There's 188,000 jobs available. It's growing at 4%, which is average, meaning over the next 10 years, there's going to be 8,200 jobs that open up. So with this one, you're probably not going to be making the business decisions themselves. What you'll be doing is you'll be collecting data and then presenting it to people who will likely be making those decisions. A lot of the time, huge business decisions are made off of gut instinct or incomplete data, and that can be a disaster. So one example of something that you'd be doing, which would be extremely valuable to a business, is identifying what's known as KPI or key performance indicators. So for instance, this would be a very simple example, of course, but on this YouTube channel, key performance indicators would be the click-through rate, how often you guys click on my cringy thumbnails, and then also how long you watch the videos. In my opinion, those are the two most important key performance indicators, and so those are the two things that I pay the most attention to. In a business, this would be much more complicated, of course, you have to actually find these indicators. On YouTube, they pretty much tell you what the most important things are, so they make it really easy. But in the real world, you have to identify what these indicators are, identify how important they are, how important they are compared to everything else, for instance, and then also figure out how you can increase them. This might not sound that important, but it actually makes a huge difference. The difference that this can make is pretty much night and day. Number nine on the list is going to be public accounting. So with public accounting, you would probably be providing auditing services, tax services, of course, but you'd also be advising and consulting other companies. So with this career, you can expect to make around $60,000 a year starting off and 138,000 in mid-career pay. One career path you could go down is becoming a financial examiner and they make around $81,000 a year. There's 66,000 jobs available. It's growing at 7%, which is faster than average, meaning over the next 10 years, about 5,000 jobs are gonna pop up. So when I was researching this, the whole public versus private accountant thing, I found that public accountants make around 15 to 25% more than their private accountant counterparts. And this tends to be pretty uniform, whether we're talking about being an entry-level accountant, a controller, an auditor, a CFO, all of the different career paths that you would likely go down if you became an accountant. So I'm not surprised that this one was actually the highest paid on the entire list. If you haven't done it already, gently tap the like button for the YouTube algorithm, smash the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss an opportunity. Share the video, do all the things, but most importantly, don't leave. Check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.